Korea Media Veris Reef of Korea. Today's weekly video is on Acropora and Montiporos. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you, explain the different uh, specifications, but I'm going to concentrate more when I'm talking about the Acros because both, as you must be aware, are SPS. They're both under the same umbrella, so I'm going to concentrate more on all the detailed information, the care tips on the acros, but that also will hold true when it comes to the Montes. Uh, the only discrepancies that I might find on the Montes, then that's the actual information that I would give out when, it, you know, when I'm talking about the Montiporos. So hold on one second and let's take a deep dive. Okay, now before I start um, to give you all the information, I'm going to uh, point out with my um, target feeder, but with this point that it has, you know, like if I was going to feed shrimps or something, and I'm going to point at the SPS, the acros that I personally have. Now, first of all, here I have the uh, Hollywood Stunner. That's an acro. Then this one, I forgot the name to be honest with you, but it's also an acro. It's kind of like an encrusting type of, ca of uh, acro, uh, not similar to what these acros are called, which are called like sticks. Then you have this other little acro. I believe this might be a strawberry shortcake. I'm not sure. I know it's a, it's a very little uh, frag and it cost me quite substantially. I think by what I saw the other day when I was researching for this video, it might be a strawberry shortcake type of uh, acro. It's got beautiful colors. Now, when it comes to Montiporos, I have this one down here which is a uh, bubblegum uh, digitata, that's a Montipora. Then over here, I have the Spongotus, which is also a Montipora. And then down here, of course, you have the uh, Montipora uh, red cap, which is, of course, I just said the word, Monty. These are the Montis that I personally have and the Acros that I personally have. Okay, like I started to say before, uh, just like Acroporas and Montiporas, they're SPS corals, of course, meaning uh, small polyp stony corals. Now, uh, when it comes to acros, uh, they're known to be most challenging corals to keep, and I'll go in uh, more depth into it and explain why. Acropora coral growth pattern produce uh, different types of growth patterns. For instance, you have some that are branching type like these that you see here. You have the stack corn, L corn, and flat type of configurations. Now in the hobby, they are considered as the top more unique type of corals when it comes to growth patterns and coloration to mention a, a few topics when it comes to acros. Now they do need uh, a high light range of par values and high water flow. They're more sensitive to water parameters. Now they can show their sensitivity behavior by changing color or simply dying. So uh, what happens is uh, like let's say if there's no stability or there's you know you're trying to chase the numbers when it comes to alkalinity, calcium, etc and uh, they're not happy with it and you know since to the fact they're very sensitive they'll, they'll start to turn brownish and eventually they'll bleach. Now they are considered, now this holds true to acros and montes, they are considered an aggressive type of coral so therefore you need uh, to put them with space considering this as they grow. Now when it comes to lighting, uh, they are known to be kept at par values between 250 and 300, but can be kept at a higher par value, in which you should slowly acclimate them. So if you want to go higher, then by what I mean by slowly acclimating them, uh, you would put them at a certain level, at a cer certain quadrant of the tank, and then let's say in two weeks, a week and a half or two weeks, then you bring them up a little higher and higher and higher 
And you can, I mean, there's people that keep acros at a, not at 250, at 300, but actually at a 500 uh, par value range. But that is, of course, through acclimation. You bring them up slowly and slowly. Now, when it comes to flow, they are found in strong water currents out there in the wild, uh, which translate in the aquarium hobby that you do need high water flow. Now, the two parameters to keep low are definitely the nitrates, which should be close to zero, and the phosphates. The phosphates, I'm sorry, uh, they should be kept very close to 0.01. Higher than that, eh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's, it would be a bit higher, but again, if you do research and you look at YouTube videos and you ask questions, there's people that have uh, SPS or Acropora-dominated tanks, and they, have, uh, they actually have nitrates at 5 and 10, and they have uh, phosphates even a bit higher. Now, uh, alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium are, the imp are important to be kept at their proper levels uh, for these type of corals. Now, by what I mean by that is the calcium should be kept no less than 430. And the DKH should be kept between, I say, 8 and 9. Magnesium should be kept high, I would say between 1350 and higher. Now again, these are the values that I came up with when I did this research. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I myself, when it comes to calcium, I have my calcium at 450, 460. My DKH, I do have it around this range. I have it 89 to 92. And then my magnesium, I usually keep it between 149 and 1500. Now when it comes to feeding acros, and this also holds true to Montes. Um, what they really need is ammonia acids and zooplankton. And believe it or not, fish. So you should have a um, substantial amount or an average amount of fish. Why? Because fish, they eat, um, secrete. So not, not only is feeding when it comes to feeding, not only is amino acids good in zooplankton, but also having a certain population of fish in your, in your aquarium is also healthy for acros. Now, when it comes to plankton, what I feed is uh, mainly reefroids, which does contain zooplankton. And when it comes to amino acids, I feed it uh, coral amino by Brightwell Aquatics. Now, When it comes now to Montiporus, uh, the Montipora growth patterns can be a plating form, a branching form, like the one you see on the left on the Spongotus, or an encrusting form. Branching, of course, would be the bubblegum digi that I have, and then the uh, plating uh, that would be contributed to the red cap that I have on the lower section of the tank as you're viewing this video. Now, Montiporo corals do not have an extensive care needed as Acroporus, but that does, that does not mean that they're easily kept. You do have to be on top of them. You have to check your parameters and you should have stability within your water parameters. Now, although similar in lighting, flow, and water parameters as Acropora, some Montipora corals may not require as much light or flow. For instance, the plating type that I have here, the Monta Red Cap, that really uh, doesn't need uh, to be up there in the part values of three to 400 up there in the tank. You do not uh, need that when it comes to the plating types of Montes. Uh, this one that I have here is on the uh, middle to lower quadrant of the tank and is doing fantastic. And then in general, both Acroporus and Montipora corals do require, like I said before, stability in general. Uh, and that really, to be honest with you, that holds true to the tank as well. Whole. I hope you enjoyed the video, you found it fun, 
educational if you did hit a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and next to the uh, channel there's a little bell hit that that's the notification button so every time I upload a video which is weekly you'll be the first ones to be notified that Eddie's Reef of Korea uploaded a video and how I say always at the end of all of my videos happy reefing thank you very much for watching and have a great fantastic day bye bye